A question I'm getting more and more right now with Google Ads is with the rise of AI mode, AI max, performance max, and all of this talk about keywordless targeting, do you still need to do keyword research for Google Ads in 2026? And my answer is a big resounding yes. But the good news is, even though yes, you still need to do your keyword research, it doesn't take nearly as long as it what it used to. I remember back in the pre-2020 years before Google started rolling out a lot of these changes, keyword research could sometimes take a full day, especially if it was a larger account or a larger business you're looking at. You'd go through, do your keyword research, and then you'd painstakingly break it out into different campaigns and ad groups. And we used to use a lot of single keyword ad groups and all of those things. So for me, I'm actually happy that those days are gone. So in this video, I wanna take you through why the process for keyword research has changed in Google Ads, but I also wanna take you through why it's still really, really important. And then we're also gonna go through a step-by-step -step tutorial. We'll jump on and do a screen share so you know exactly the right way how to complete your keyword research so you can see success with Google Ads in 2026. Now, just in case we haven't met yet, my name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy. And this video is part of an annual series which I run throughout December and January every year. And this year is called Get Google Ready for 2026. So if you wanna make sure that you stay up to date with everything that has changed in Google Ads and everything that you need for success in the year forward, make sure that you're not only subscribed, but you turn on the notification bell so you can follow this playlist series as we go through. We'll be releasing one or two videos every single week throughout December and January. And also to help you further, if you follow that link in the description below, this year I'm giving away a free extra gift, which is our Google Ads Optimized course. This is a course that we usually sold for $49, has over two and a half thousand students. It contains our Google Ads Optimization Checklist, which is used by over 120,000 people who are optimizing their Google Ads campaigns with this checklist. There's a couple extra things in there that you're gonna get. So if you wanna make sure that you're well set up for success with Google Ads in 2026, follow that link in the description below. But right now, let's go through keyword research. So let's talk about why keyword research has changed. And it really comes down to the fact that people are now interacting with Google search very, very differently. I don't wanna get sidetracked down this path because I've got other videos where I talk about AI mode in Google search. But to put it bluntly, people are interacting with Google search really Really, really differently now. We're already starting to see some data come out of the US market, which was the first market to get AI overviews and AI mode. And there's some early data coming out that's saying that 58% of people do use AI mode and do use the AI overviews. And 89% of those people say they find it really, really helpful. So the big shift here, searches inside of Google ads are becoming more conversational. So rather than just searching men's black gym shirts, people are more now starting to search in sentences or they're using voice search where they're saying things like, can you let me know the best men's black shirts that I could wear at a gym, which also helps with sweating and also is quick drying. Rather than just using a three or four word search inside of Google search, I know that's a lot of times that I've said the word search, they're adding on to that product that they're looking for and adding on some benefits or some different modifiers that they like. The reason for why this affects your Google search or your keyword research is because in May of this year, Google released data saying that 15% of all new Google search inquiries by users are brand new. They've never been searched before. Now we don't know the exact number yet, but my prediction, and it obviously makes sense with more and more people using AI modes and AI overviews, is that that number is gonna skyrocket. That's why your Google keyword research is gonna be very, very different because as there's more and more unique Google searches, how do you target something that you don't know what the user is gonna be searching? But I don't want you for one second to think that keyword research research is not important because for me, it is still very, very, very important. And let me explain why. There has been talk about how Google is shifting and some people are saying that Google is dying. But as of this year, there is clear data that shows 65% of all online purchases, the users start to their journey inside of Google search or on YouTube, which is obviously owned by Google. And then the actual leading market or the leading age bracket is actually Gen Z, those 18 to 24 year olds. So that's a really strong indicator that Google search is not going anywhere. Yes, it'll look really, really different, but it's still a real, real key for your business to get those search terms right. So now let's talk about how does that affect your strategy? So previously, you'd really, really be looking for those really, really exact keywords that you want to target inside of your Google Ads campaigns. But now what I really want you to think about, the reason for why we want to do keyword research is we really want to find the core keyword themes 
that we can group together inside of our individual ad groups or asset groups so that we can see really, really high levels of relevance for Google Ads. Because remember, the main thing that we wanna be doing here is we wanna make sure that for that user's initial search inquiry, even though we don't exactly know what it's gonna be, we wanna make sure that we've got relevant ad copy and, we've got, and we're have got sending it to relevant landing pages. So that's why we want, when we do our keyword research, it's probably not finding keywords, it actually should really be called keyword themes. So those keywords that have the same meaning, same intent, that are the most relevant for your services and your products. So before we get into that screen share, we're gonna take you through how to complete your keyword research for your Google Ads campaigns. I really want you to think about this when we look at the framework for how we would structure our accounts. Now, inside of each of our individual ad groups, I like to have one or two, sometimes three or four, broad match keywords, but I want them to be longer tail. So by longer tail, rather than just having men's shirts, I would have something like men's black gym shirts that are quick drying. So that would be my broad match keyword. So I want to give as much intent and as much meaning as possible so that we can get the best results. Then from there, we do want to build out exact match keywords and keep them inside of the same ad group. And the reason for that is because with broad match keywords, they do actually take into account as one of the signals, the other keywords which are in the same ad group. So as promised, let's now jump into a screen share so I can show you through how to do your keyword research in 2026 for your Google Ads campaigns. All right, before I jump in and show you how to complete your keyword research, I do just wanna add one little side note. And that is obviously people do ask sometimes, what about exact match keywords? Do I still use them? Yes, I still do use a lot of exact match keywords and especially exact match only keywords. So I do wanna make that little note there. Although while I do think that broad match keywords is a really, really core and important keyword match type that you need to be using now, there are some businesses where we just still see that this is not the best fit. And this is very much for B2B or like niche within a niche businesses, or if you've got a really, really super high CPC. So it's in those cases, I don't want you to think that you've got to use broad match keywords, but it is something as we move more and more down this path that you will need to start using broad match keywords in order to even get access to the AI mode, because remembering there's only three ways that your ads can appear in AI mode and AI overviews, and that's if you use AI Max, Broad Match, or Performance Max campaigns. So I just wanted to add that as a bit of a side note, but with that said, let's jump in and do this keyword research. This example we're gonna be doing is for this company, which does toothpaste for mouthwash and gingivitis and gum disease. Now, the really first step in this is essentially what I want you to think about when you are coming and you're planning on doing your keyword research. The first step is to actually just really think about what would you search if you're trying to find your product or your service that you're selling. And in this case, it would be toothpaste for gingivitis and gum disease. And there would also be mouthwash for gingivitis and gum disease. We've already got that ready to go. What we're gonna do from here is let's jump into your Google Ads account. And when you're inside of Google Ads, I want you to go over into the tools setting. When you're in tools, go up to planning, and then you wanna go into your keyword planner. This brings us to our keyword research tool. Then from here, we wanna go through and discover new keywords. Look, you can organize keywords and ad groups inside of Google Ads. I still prefer to do it in a Google Sheet, but it doesn't really matter which way you go around it. So what you can do from here is you go into your discover your new keywords, and we're gonna put in through here, toothpaste for gingivitis and gum disease, and I'll also add in mouthwash. And then what you can also add in is you can actually add in the actual URL. Let me just uh, put this in through here. Then you could go through and get results. All right, so what I actually had to do there is I did actually have to add in some extra keywords. So we actually put in toothpaste for gum disease, and we also put in toothpaste to help treat gum disease. And you can see through here, it's given us a couple of different things. So we're gonna put in the get results. So it's got the tooth, the keywords that we provided, and it also allows you to refine any of the keywords. So if you wanted to as well, so you can see from here, so let's just say that we know, for example, we didn't want bleeding gums to be in there. We could take that out and it'll go through and update these keyword results in through here. So this is where you do need to use some of your own product knowledge to know, like if there's any of these symptoms, or any of these benefits which you know don't apply to your product, you just uncheck them. And then what happens from there is it automatically takes it out of the refined results. For this one, what we are going to do, we're just gonna keep these four options in here, gingivitis, bleeding gums, sensitive teeth, 
bad breath. Once you've got through that, if you wanted to, you can go through and take out different brands. We're going to take out competitor brands. Once again, that's taken out some more results. And then from there, what you want to go through from here is you just want to go through and look and start selecting some different keywords. Now, in days gone by, you used to take a lot of note of the CPC. You also used to take a note a lot of the, the year on year change and the competition. But what I really want to stress here is that this data is what's happening previously. And obviously, because we're in such a fast moving pace, I'm not saying it's not important, but just I wouldn't get too caught up in what the CPCs are. It's really looking at finding the themes and grouping them together. And then the one thing you do want to take into account is when we're talking about starting budgets, you do want to be pushing at least 10 clicks a day, especially for search campaigns. So from here, if we were to go toothpaste for gum disease, it's between 122 to let's just call it $5. So to be safe, I would say you'd want a starting budget of at least $50. So you take the CPC, the higher CPC and times it by 10. You do want to keep in note here as well. You more want to be focusing on the top of page bid. That's those top four positions. Also remembering that the lower page bid is not going to be as relevant, especially as we move into more AI overviews results, because you're only going to get this top ads are going to be showing in those results. So what you want to go through here is let's just go through and you do a quick look of some different themes. And then once you've got those keywords selected, what you want to do is you want to add your keywords to create a plan. And then from there, you can go up to see what says saved keywords up through here. Generally, what I'll do here is if you can see this download little button, so I'll go through and you can either save it to a CSV file or into Google Sheets. Let's just do it into Google Sheets. And we're going to write keywords. This is going to make a lot of sense when we start getting into how to set up your different search campaigns. Once again, you could go through and do a correct. I still like to have a Google Sheet because I'll show you the reason for that is that I just find that this becomes a better place for me to manually go through and tidy up this keywords. So because what we want to do from here is we then want to create our different campaigns and our different ad groups so that we've got our keyword plan there ready to go. So right now, just give me a minute or two and I'm going to go through and refine and just reorganize this keyword research. All right, thanks for sticking with me. We've now got this set up and let me just talk you through what I've done through here. So we've got our campaign, we've got two different ad groups. We've got our mouthwash ad group and our toothpaste ad group. What we've also got through here is you can see with our toothpaste ad group, I've got our broad match keywords down here. So we've got three different broad match keywords. And the reason for why we've done that is when we've gone through and had a look at the landing page, we can see here that we've got information about stop bleeding for gums, gum disease, sensitivity. So that's why we've been able to add in these exact match keywords about stop bleeding because that's relevant to the landing page. So you do need to take into account what's on the landing page there as well. But what we've got through here, so we've got our three broad match keywords and rather than just going toothpaste or toothpaste for gingivitis, we're really going into things like, you know, adding those extra words, prevent gingivitis, gum inflammation, toothpaste, really giving clear intent. Then we've got our exact match keywords and we've done the same for our mouthwash ad groups. The other reason why I like this Google Sheet method, especially if you're doing this on behalf of a client or if you need to share this with a business partner or someone else in your team, you've got a really clean Google Sheet that you can go through, add, give some people different edit access and really get this good to go. We're going to do the same thing for our ad copy in the next video, which we're about to go through and record. And then when we come through our campaign setup, you've got all your keywords, you've got all your ad groups and it's all in one nice Google Sheet ready to go. And that's how you complete your keyword research for Google Ads campaigns in 2026. Now, if you also want to stay up to date with everything that's happening in Google Ads to make sure that you never miss out on any new update or any new strategy that is working, if you follow the link in the description below, you can also sign up to join my newsletter. We release a newsletter every single Monday giving you the latest updates in Google Ads. And if you want to watch all the videos in this Get Google Ready playlist, remembering that this is only video two, so there's going to be more and more videos coming out, one or two new videos every week throughout December and January. And you can watch that full playlist right here. See you next time.